Welcome to HQ Live. Hi, I'm Vicki Hoth from Handy Quilter, and joining me today is Susan Manry. Hi. Hi, Vicki. Susan is one of our field educators and gets all over the country and all over the world to teach. And your favorite subject, as we know, is? Pro Stitcher. Pro Stitcher. So <laughs> what are you going to teach us today? Well, I have a couple of things in mind, but the one of the things that comes up most often from my students is, how do I connect two independent designs? Two, you mean like a flower and the same flower? Or a, flower a flower and, and a, a different flower, or a flower okay. and a turtle. Oh, okay. I know we have the tools, remember when we did December 2018 HQ Live? Mm -hmm. And we did the repeats. So we took a clover and we just repeated That's right. that. But you're and talking about two independent right. designs. Yeah. All right. That's Let's what we're going to do, do first. Okay. So we have these really cute little dump trucks and fire trucks and all that stuff in our continuous line designs okay. in the handy quilter folder. So if I'm doing a little baby quilt and I want all those trucks around yep. my quilt. So let's do it. All right. So file design and we're going to open the cement truck. That's a cute truck. And you look at that and you notice that we have the start point over here on the left, how Pro Stitcher would start sewing here and it would stop sewing here. And that's what shows us that that's a continuous line okay. design. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to, I could repeat this truck and we have a tool for snapping the start and end points together if we wanted to just repeat this truck. Okay, so just this truck. So let's do that just to show you the, show the difference. So we go to so our repeat. Go to repeat and then here we can go to horizontal and just add some repeats. Okay. And they automatically snap together here. Because they're on the same plane line as far as you're starting in. Exactly. So let's undo and get back to where we have just our one dump truck or cement mixer again. Okay. Pardon me. Wrong truck. Uh, and let's go get another one. File another, design, not, not open. another cement A truck. A completely enough. different truck. So oh, okay. here's the dump truck. Okay. And he's on top of the other yep, guy. Yeah, he came out right on top of the other guy. So let me just move this over. Okay, so they're on top of each other. Exactly. So I'm just going to move them over so we can look at them. So how did you side know which one side. you were moving? Well, the one that I was moving was the one that I just opened. I could, and it was dark. It was dark. So it was active. So I could tell it was selected. Okay. I could also see that its start and end points were green and red. So that okay. made it easy for me. All You'll right. notice that this guy here in the background that's not selected right now, he's kind of grayed out. And so he's not active. And exactly. I can see on your sidebar that that, in your workspace, that exactly. you've got two designs and the truck with exactly. the, the dump truck is active. And we can easily select them either by touching the screen, but to me it's easier and more accurate to select one piece or another piece from the workspace tab in the sidebar. And you're using the mouse, which, I am. which people can use if they don't want to do the touch. You can totally use your mouse to maneuver around exactly. on the screen. And mm -hmm. we're doing that today so that you can see where the pointer is and what you're doing. So. Exactly. But that's a good thing. There okay. You go. So I'm going to hit the refresh to give us a better view of what we're looking at here. And then I want to move the crosshairs over into the middle of the quilt just to, so that they're a little bit more visible. Okay just so everyone can see what we're doing. Now, there are several tools that I could use for Pro Stitcher here that could ultimately bring the end point of this design and the start point of this design together. Okay. But there's one fast and easy way to do it, and that's to let the computer do it for you. Then it's 100% accurate. All right, okay. let's do it. So we have the first one selected. I'm going to use the Modify tab the reposition option, and I'm going to reposition the end point of the design on the crosshair. So over here on the sidebar, this puts the end point. Of this selected? Exactly, okay. of the selected design. And it moved design. it right there. So once I've moved one of these pieces, I want to make sure I don't move my crosshairs because we're treating the crosshairs or the needle as an anchor. Okay. And so we're going to make sure we don't move anything except the designs from here forward. So do I need to drop my needle? Because if I move that... Yeah, thanks, Vicki. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so it's not a bad idea to drop your needle, especially when Vicki is helping you. Because... <laughs> because... Putting a point. <laughs> it's a good idea. So we're going to drop the needle here, and let's do it again. We're going to okay. reposition the end point of the cement truck on the crosshairs. Okay. So now we want to I'll select... i my hands off the machine. <laughs> <laughs> now we want to select the dump truck. So back to the sidebar and from the workspace tab, we're just going to click on the dump truck. And that's going to drop the cement truck and select. Okay. 
the dump truck. And back to modify, reposition. So I can see it in my sidebar already. It is. Already. It's still open in my sidebar. Okay. And this time we're going to put the start point of the design on the crosshairs. So let me refresh again. And you can see now that they're perfectly aligned. So I need to select them in the order that I want them to stitch. Okay. All right. And so that's the next most important part. We're going to look down here. Mm -hmm. These are the selection tools. These are the tools that give us the opportunity to select more than one piece at a time. Remember from the workspace tab, if I select one, it drops the one I have. Mm -hmm. And if I select the other, so how do I pick up more than one piece at a time? That's what these tools are for. This is the select all tool. So what you're saying is that if I brought my dump truck in last and I want it to be first, mm -hmm. I would select it first, even mm -hmm. though I put it there, and then it would stitch that and then move over and stitch that. It could. Mm -hmm. But if I want it this way, which I brought them both in in the right order. I could select all. And what would it happen if you select it all? It works perfectly because we worked with the cement truck first. And I see a little black dot right, right there. there. And that tells us that those pieces are aligned perfectly. Nice. So the question I get all the time is, how do we take the corner and the border design and make those pieces fit perfectly together? And snap together. And this is an illustration of how to snap those pieces together. So if together. that dump truck or the cement truck had been a corner, like an L-shaped corner, mm -hmm. you would have brought that in, Repositioned. snapped them over exactly. together, and then just didn't do the select all. Now I want to put another corner in. Okay. I would have brought that other corner in and done the same thing. Exactly. So let's, I know there's one more truck in here. Okay. Let's bring that in and add that to this. Okay. So let's go find our other truck. Well, first, since we know what, are we going to add it to this end? Yeah. Or are we going to yeah. add it to this end? No, let's go ahead and add it to the, okay. the so dump truck. So ultimately, this stop point or end point needs to be on the crosshairs. Okay. So let's do that first. Modify, reposition end point and now we'll go get the other truck so file design open and that little truck so here's our last vehicle okay we're going to reposition the start point on the crosshairs to the end point of that exactly or actually just to the crosshairs exactly isn't it? okay so modify reposition start point and now the three pieces are in order Okay. So what happens now if I hit select all? One, two, three, and joined together. The end point is right where we want it. Okay. So what would we want to do with this before we stitch? I would baseline it. I would baseline it too. And stitch it as so I have a question now. Okay. This would be really cute if the trucks if I'm doing edge to edge and the trucks went this way, and then the next row they went that way. Mm, that'd be fun. I'd like that. So can you do that for us? Sure, we could do that. All right. We can take this example that we have already and duplicate it. File, or excuse me, edit, duplicate, and then modify, rotate, and mirror those pieces. Okay, so you have but now your start point's over on the <coughs> right. Maybe I always want to stitch from the left to the right. I need to. Another easy one. That's modify swap. And that just swaps the start and end points of the entire pattern stitch out. And then I could take those two and just repeat down my yep. quilt. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that would be adorable. Right. <laughs> okay. I see that we have an extra truck and cement there. We do. That we don't need them, that we can just go ahead and get rid of those. That's right. On so our workspace, do we see those? Uh, they're on the workspace. So can we just go to our you workspace? Can go right to here at the workspace oh. and find the first, I believe it should be the first So we've got group. two merged nope. and we then go. we've got, so we need to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. You can do it a couple of different ways. You can go to the file tab and close the selected design or just as quickly edit, cut, We'll remove those. So they're gone. <laughs> Shazam! <laughs> Just that fast. And they're then gone. we select everything. So yep. which is which is mo the merged group <clears throat> nineteen? Well, the way that these are ordered, Pro Stitcher assigns numbers mm -hmm. in chronological order. So group nineteen would have been the first group that we worked with. 
Okay. And group 1921 then would have been the so second So we want to bring that, that 1921 down. Let's bring it down. I, I feel really, yeah, that makes me feel better. You better okay. now? Okay. Yeah, I feel better. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, and that's the order that stitches. That's right. And so select all Combine will give us them. the correct stitch order. So we would stitch this row first and Pro Stitcher would stitch this row second. And if we use the repeat feature to fill up our area with these all the way down, that's exactly what we would get. Okay, that's awesome. All right, so we've we've merged designs together and you know different designs and there are so many because I've taken Boy. flower designs and merged them together and and if you need to adjust some points you can take them into your art and stitch and yep. and move things a little bit but let's uh, what what else have we got that you can show us so one of the cool things that came out this year in Pro Stitcher Premium one of the new features is the rubber band area and I've just been playing with that a little bit lately and I've been having some fun with it. And you showed me something so awesome. I, yes, again, sometimes we, we get a new tool or we get a new feature and we have to think about it for a little while. How am I going to use that? Well, that tool, let's clear everything off okay. the surface here to start with. So let's get a nice clean workspace here and we're going to go to the file tab and the first thing I want to do is open up the circle design from the handy quilter block design. So you're going to rubber band a circle because I a am. circle takes hundreds of points it to does. get really perfect. I've done lots of quilts that have these great circular modern um, pieces on uh -huh. them and it, it can take a long time to create a circle area. Um, okay. Matter of fact, a perfect circle is going to take 360 points. Obviously we're not going to put 360 <laughs> points. <laughs> Depends on how big not, your circle is. Not too. going to do that. But if right. you think about how many times you have to move the machine and hit multi-point, multi-point, multi-point in order to create the perfect circle area when you can open up a circle design and do this instead. Area rubber band and look at that just that fast we have the perfect circle so this area. is what a six inch circle it tells uh -huh. me I have 65 points yeah and let me tell you they're placed a lot better than any circle area I've ever right. made so point to <laughs> where it says that 65 so points. over here in your in your sidebar is a wealth of information over here we have three tabs available to us now the area tab that talks about the area that we have it's six inches in width and height and then it contains a total of 65 for just this points. one if this were larger say because it's a 12 inch or six inch circle uh -huh. if it was 12 the points would have gone it would have been up a lot at more. least twice as many points yeah uh -huh. okay so this is a fast and easy way to do that rather and, than exactly and because we can save this area and use it again and again and again and resize it. So I want you to show me how to save this area. Okay, let's do that. So it's easy. File and then save and then area. And when we choose that, we navigate to the place which it already drive. has an area. And it will always take you there. It's being called area and we would want to give it a name like circle. Circle. So circle area. Okay. And save it. All right. So then if we clear everything off the screen here and I need to go find it. Where's my area? There's. I can find it here from my most recent. Okay. And there it is. So go back to the area and open, just actually open it up okay. and see what I've got there. So there it is. There is. It my looks a little different than the designs. I think most people know that when we have designs, oops, I'm in the wrong place to show you that. Excuse me. If we open a design, the colors of the tiles are different. Depend on the, the icon. Depend on what kind format. of file we're opening mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. moment. So okay. the HQV files are green and the area files are all that beautiful hot pink. pink. Yeah. Okay. There all right. Go. So there's my area uh, of a circle. And then I can put a design in it. I yep. can skew. I can do different things mm -hmm. with it, resize. So I don't think this is all you had planned, though. I no, I have something else back. I want to say. We have lots of shapes in the library already mm -hmm. that we could use for rubber bands. But I started thinking the other day, what if we combined some shapes from the library and created rubber bands around all right. those? So this is what I want us to do. So we're going to clear all again. Okay. And we're going to go back to the file and design and open the triangle design. So let's start with that. 
So there's one. Now if I create an area around this, remember what that rubber band area does is it really does hug the shape just mm -hmm. like a rubber band would. Right. So in this case, the rubber band would be a perfect triangle, which okay. is another fun shape to play around with when it comes to cropping oh, right. and skewing and so forth. We but, should spend more time together. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you need to come to Texas, girlfriend. Okay, because we're, we're always working when we're here. Right. So I'm also going to open the circle design. All right, and I'm going to lower it down a little bit and kind of center it there and then resize it just a little bit. So modify, resize. I'm just going to ooch it a little bit and make it a little bit bigger. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Well, that might Maybe be a little one bit. more too big. Actually, I think I need to reposition it a little bit. It's pretty close. Okay. I'm going to use the reposition nudge tool to move it up just a hair. I think that's good enough for okay. what we're going to do. And then All I right. need to be able to have both of these selected at the same time. Okay. So again, I'm going to go down here and use our select, select all, all tool. And then we're going to area, rubber band area. And what we've created Oh, look at that. <laughs> is a fun and interesting area shape, right? That we don't have as a design. Right. It? So what are we going to do to it? Well, now that we have this cool area, what should we do with it? Well, first of all, let me ask you this. Do I need the circle and the triangle on my screen anymore? No, nope, don't need them. So we can just clear that off. We can either close the selected design or we okay. could Okay. All right. So now I could see this making a flower with the points, right? petals, these yep. are the petals, mm -hmm. but I could see, because it's an area, I could put a fill in it, like yep. a big fill and reduce yep. it down small micro, yep. and crop, all right, should let's go, should let's go, go find a fill, yes, let's go <laughs> hunting. <laughs> okay, I, yeah, continuous, continuous line. line. I think that blustery breeze would be a good one to That's start with. That's a good with. start, let's go there. Okay. okay. So there's our blustery breeze. It's kind of big right now for our design, isn't it? Right. So if we move it over a little bit and resize it, if we start shrinking it very much, though, it's not going to be as tall as our area. Okay. What if we use our X form and just bring in the sides? I don't know what it'll look like. I don't either. That's, there's one way to find out, though, isn't there? Okay. So we'll just try that. Give it a minute to give us handles. Any second now. <laughs> Sometimes with it as big as this, because this is 24 inches. It is a big one, so isn't it? Gonna, so it takes a little there bit. There we, we go. go. It just had to think. Okay, so we can grab a hold of one of these handles. Okay, we have the lock sideways. turned on. We do have the lock turned on. So if on. we went to our modify, resize, and turn lock off, then we can do we each go. one independent. So we can still yeah. keep it the height we want it to be, and then we can squish it up from side to side. That looks pretty awesome. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Keep squishing. We're doing good. Oh, that's that's surprising that it doesn't, it's not. It doesn't distort it. I yeah. like it. Okay, that looks good. Okay. We happy with the positioning from side to side? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what should we do next? How about? Let's do a crop. Crop. And we're going to crop away everything outside of the area. So outside. And that leaves a pretty interesting fill. A lot of jumps. It? Yeah, yeah, but that's that's awesome. We can okay, fix that. Okay, let's close those close edges. Those are edges. And how it's going to stitch. Pretty cool, huh? Yes. Yeah. So I guess since we haven't baselined, we could still move the pattern oh, around a little bit. Yes. And then we could make sure that we didn't have any little funny gaps in there. Yeah, I like. Is that oh, good? that looks good. Okay. So baseline. Mm-hmm. So far, so good. Right. And there's our beautiful pattern, and we can just slide it over here out of the way. Okay, because we're going to do another one. We're going to do another one. So That's let's right. go ahead. Okay, so let's find another pattern. Should we do our select? Or oh. do you want to keep your transform on? Nah, we'll change it for now. And then we'll go and find another pattern. Okay. So what should we do this time? Well, you were pointing out one, the, the little loops. The little swirls double here. Double swirls, which I think would be. This is a pretty cool fill. I think it's overlooked as a fill. I, I think it might be a little big, though. Is it? It is a little, but we'll, let's repeat it a few times. Well, let's okay. resize it a little bit first. It's probably easier to resize it until the density is more similar to okay. this one. If we're going to keep it on the same piece. Of course, I'm going to resize it proportionally for now. Okay, so you put your lock back on. Do you think that's about good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then we can do some repeats here. 
and then we need to do some vertical repeats. Now what about that? Do we need to offset that second row, you think, to make that make these little guys nest a little bit better? Well, let's do some more repeats because I can see that it's not enough. Drag that up, maybe another couple. We need one more. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's do an offset. I think we need to because I want to see this round edge mm -hmm. right up in here. Okay. okay. So repeat, but we're going to go to the wrap tab this time, or the wrap option, and we're going to wrap the horizontal row. row. And I think I'm just going to push the arrow buttons until we watch them scoot around. Okay. How's that look? Mm -hmm. A little better? Yeah, I like that. I like it better. It's not quite so uniform. Yeah. Okay. So can we, I see right at the bottom here, you're just barely catching that bottom yeah, row. Yeah, we either want to go we, up and catch it or lose it all together. Yeah. I'm not sure what you want to do. Yeah, let's, that let's, looks good. Let's reduce the gap a little bit between the rows, too. What do you say? Okay. We'll shorten the distance you. between the rows. Look how fun this is. So we went back to our vertical <laughs> and, and just reduced that gap a little. Yeah. How does that look next to this one? Is the density fairly similar? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, yep, I think that's good, yes. So now that we've made some significant modifications to it, we should baseline it. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to crop it the same way we did the other one. Modify. Crop. Tab, crop, and the outside, outside again. Edge now is this closed. is going to be rose stitch. It is. So we're going to stitch across back and forth. Now, okay. So I'm not big on that tail, that top point. Can you adjust yeah, this? Yeah, we still need to fix that. Can you just move it? Sure. All we have to do is move <gasps> Look, it. Look, I like that better. It just helped. I do too. And Even actually, if the bottom is a little un. Mm. You know, we could still resize hey, this just a hair to make turn, it big enough to fit. Turn transform on the okay. X form. Rotate it. Okay. Let's get, let's do a little rotate. Okay. And see if so those are at an angle. I can see my rotate here. So let's try this. Oh, that'd be fun. Oh yes. <laughs> Ooh, I like that yes, better. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Should we oh, rotate oh, it to the of, same angle? No, but we still have leftovers here. We can move it. Oh, perfect. Don't okay. move it. Stop. It's perfect. All right, got it. Like that. Okay. okay. So baseline to freeze it. Wait, did we close our edges? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Good. Now these are rows, so you will see that row. Yep. But that looks. But they're only two. I mean, they're a total of you know just it'll, a couple it's of beautiful. trunks. It's beautiful. Okay. It'll look nice. I like that. Okay. So we baseline. Baseline. And, and then scoot this scoot one off that to the one side. Away. All okay, right. that's two. I have one for you. Okay. All right, we'll go in. This is going to be a cool one. <laughs> We're going down okay. and scroll down. Keep scrolling. It's called the Greek this squared. This one. There it is. Yes. Okay. Okay. All righty. It's really big. I we've need made to a mess on the screen. Let's make it easier yeah, for, so for our viewers to see what we're doing here. Let's go back over to workspace. Oh, I have to do that from here, don't I? Yes. We'll just move these guys over a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Now this is way too big. I want it sure. really small because it's going to be this little checkerboard look. Okay, so we can use the transform tool to just small, small. Keep going, small. Keep going, small. Smaller, smaller, smaller. <laughs> okay, I'll let you go. Is that, that. good? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay, and then let's go back to our select tool. And then we'll do a repeat of this. And we'll repeat this one the same way we did the others. So repeat. I've never hit fit when I tried to fill a space like this. I'll try it and see what it does. <laughs> okay, <laughs> did so that's good. not bad, but we need more horizontal <laughs> across and probably more vertical. Yeah, we're going to need at least one. Because that worked okay. Fit only gives you what will stay inside of the area. Right. Okay. So, so that's good. I think we want to center one of these right. pretty close to the top. So I, I think we need one well, more we vertical think too row. Much alike here. Is it too much or is it just enough? Just enough. <laughs> <laughs> just enough. Okay. Okay. So this way we can center the Greek key here in that point. And that kind of centers you, everything else a okay, little bit, too. Okay. Do you, would you rather do it differently? I just wondered if you want the point filled or not. If you draw, yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, I like that better. Okay. I like that. Okay. Okay. Well, it still needs to be nudged, and I'm not good enough with my thumb. Okay, so, I'm so just we go to nudge modify reposition, and we're just nudging. Until it's about the same on okay. both sides. That looks good. Okay, I'm good.
ready to crop. Yep, baseline. Modify, yes. Modify, crop, crop. Outside. outside. Well, there's a lot of edges. Close the edges. That's edges okay. closed. And then baseline again. Baseline. Okay, so that's three. We need one more. All right, let's go back to our library. Okay. Okay, so we've done the, the Greek, we've done the swirls. Uh, let's just do a regular stipple. You want to? Just a regular stipple to okay. show what you can do with the stipple, or else that oh, rolling along would be cool. Oh, that'd be pretty awesome. Let's do the rolling along. <laughs> too bad we're not doing the stipple. You can try that yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this is really way too big, so again, we're going to reduce this. So let's just grab our X form but again. But the thing that's so nice is that there are so many designs in here and you're thinking, well, I don't have enough designs. But looking at what we're doing today oh, and goodness. Taking, taking designs that you wouldn't think to do this way and you are making your whole new library. We have a lot more designs than we think we do. We just, right. once we learn how many, what variety of ways you can use them and take them apart and put them back together, your library is much larger than you think it is. Right, that's way too long. It to is. You know, I'm going to go back to my modify, um, resize, resize and, and unlock really again because I wasn't getting the change that I wanted. Oh, it's got to go really small. I know. It's going to have to be itsy bitsy bitsy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, even smaller. It's got to go smaller. Well, if we make it too dense, it's not going to look right with the other pieces. Oh, it's way too big still. Trust me on this. <laughs> it's getting smaller. I know. It's cool. Smaller, smaller. Keep going smaller. Trust me on this. Say when, before it when? Po poofs when? out of before existence. It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. Make it make it narrower. I think it's too spread out. Yeah, there you go. How's okay, that? I'm good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so we I'm going to baseline that one before that we do the repeats. Be, and why do you think that? Because we changed it so much. This baseline you can't use it too many times. Baseline just makes Pro Stitcher work smarter, not harder. So what it does is it freezes it as a new design with, right. all, with those changes we made. Exactly. And now we start from this ground That's going right. forward. Just like we started by opening this design mm -hmm. fresh. So yeah. Pro Stitcher thinks about things in increments, I think. If we, if we take a, a design and we do, here's our open design, plus this, plus this, plus this, Pro Stitcher has to think about all of those steps. But if, if we take out the back Once we baseline, steps, exactly. All it has it to think about is this forward. one thing. Okay. And I know I'm talking about a computer thinking, which is kind of silly, but I think it's something we can all understand. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's turn off the transform and just start. Okay. Go to select, and that turns that off. And whoops. Select our little guy. And back to repeat fit, because that worked really well the last time. Okay. Let's zoom in on that so we can see what we're doing here. Now we have a gap from top to bottom, and we don't want that, right? No. So let's close that vertical gap, or at least just by reduce using the it. minus. So I'm just going to minus until the gap is about the same distance as the lines that okay. we're stitching that around. Okay, that looks good. Does that look good? Okay, and then we need to add horizontal, horizontal, and some vertical, and vertical. <coughs> oh yes, that's pretty cool. That is a. That's a <laughs> really looks good. See? So again, you trust me on the I know, size. you're right, you're right. You're always right. <laughs> no, no, this one I, I take credit. No. So again, if we want to center this design in here in any way, like if we wanted this, mm -hmm. the vertical. Which, which it is right there at the top, you've got one in going. In between, whoops, it's half on both sides. Or we, we could, add could another rotate this one too. I don't know Ooh. what it would look like rotated. I don't either. Let's just go and let's do it with modify rotate and get a 45 degree on it this time and see what we get. Oops, guess what? We forgot to group it, didn't <laughs> we? Didn't group first. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't know. I like it, but somehow I, the angle on the triangle doesn't quite go with the angle that we put on there. So the cool thing is undo I love it. and we can we can do okay. leave it the way it was. So we can put it there. We, I added a repeat from side to side. So you want to go, that to go down Yeah, the center, I have this little you? symmetry okay. thing going I on here. Totally <laughs> understand I like my symmetry. Okay, we good with this? Baseline. Okay. Crop. Crop. Outside. Edges closed. Oh. Pretty slick. How many? Oh, uh -oh. wait, where'd right. you I go? I shouldn't have done that. Undo. Undo. There we go. And okay. baseline. All right. And there are four pieces. Now, People probably wonder what we're going to do with these. They think, why are you messing with this, you silly women? <laughs> <laughs> I 
course, they think that a lot. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, uh, silly women, what have you got in mind? Well, do we want to show our little projects and, and show them what we're after or what we're trying to get to is something right. along these lines? This is kind of what we're working for is something like this, where we're we have green. cropped into an area and created some so interesting textures. This right here was a six inch flower. I enlarged it to 18 inches. Mm -hmm. And then I cropped out each petal, put a design in and cropped. But what you're doing is you're taking a shape as if it were one of these, and now somehow you're going to put that together right. to create some type of a Something like this. circular. Because all of ours have a center medallion in them. We're not creating that center medallion. You're just going to put those. We're just going to put those four petals together. Okay, let's do it. Okay. And guess what? We have tools for that. <laughs> oh, good. So do we need our area anymore? No, I wouldn't no, think. No, we don't. Area is a design tool, and we're done with it. So I'm going to clear the area. Okay. And then we're going to use the crosshairs again as a centering tool, as an anchor tool. Okay. So that modify reposition feature here mm -hmm. has not just these options to use the start point or the end point, but we have lots. And everything from here up is about how your design relates to your crosshairs. Everything on this uh, sidebar. So these, if you look at the little icon there, up here in the left-hand corner, okay. that's the needle. That represents your needle mm -hmm. in your crosshairs. So when we click this button, our design is going to mm -hmm. land down here on this side, in okay. the southeast corner. So do corner. that so we can see what okay. it looks like. Which is fine, but that's not the angle that we want that's on this right. piece. That's right. That's not what right. we want. So that's what we're going to do. But first, we need to rotate these pieces. OK. Because we want to get them going in the correct orientation. OK. So modify, rotate. We're going to rotate that 45 degrees and then reposition where the crosshairs are at the top left. This is cool. OK. <laughs> so by selecting another piece. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to modify, rotate, and this time we'll rotate that one in the other direction, and then reposition to the top right. So okay. there are two. Okay. And we'll take and this one. And if you are so symmetrical that you have to have the same design in all four, That's you easy could too. Once, once you created that one design, you could just duplicate. That's right. You've already done one, just duplicate. That's right. Okay. I'm just thinking. This is fun. <coughs> Where am I here? I want to be here. The bottom left. There we go. That's looking pretty good. <laughs> it is. I want to break our arms, patting ourselves on oh, the here back. You, I'll We're pat you. When you pat That's me. good. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to flip that, and then I'm going to rotate it one more time, and then reposition to yeah, bottom. Nope, nope, wrong. Oh, nope, nope right, that's right. right. And then refresh. And we're ready to sew. Okay, so now let's go to our workspace. Okay. And let's see what order. And it, it, what order do you want to stitch? Well, I, I'm kind of a creature of habit, and I like to start in my upper left and go around. But that's not what we have. No, it's not. If I start, so, if I go through the order here, blustery breeze, double swirl, Greek squared, and rolling along. So can you use the arrows that are down here below yeah, remain. You can. And, and you can. And I, I do it that way sometimes, but I also like to use the multi-select tool. Okay, to let's, do, my let's order. do both. I'd like you to show how to use those arrows. Okay, I'm trying to remember how to use You're those gonna arrows. You're going to select all. I have to select every one of them first. And it groups them. Right. And then how do I do this? I You're can't gonna remember. You're going to select. Which one do you want to start first? I want to start select this all. one first. No, you got to select all. I want to do this one first. You want which is the double swirl? So right. touch it. Got it. No, no, touch double swirl. Oh, I touched the wrong and one. And then Sorry. your arrows become active, and you can shift it Move up. Move him up. Okay. Okay. Then the next Lustery one. breeze is where it belongs. And then the Greek key is, he's, needs, he's needs to be down. Are you going to around? I was in a just going to move this one up. So that should do it. One, two, three, four. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's the order that they're in. Then that's you can right. baseline them like that. Yep. Now, let's undo this because I want you to show your version. Okay. There are so many ways that we can select and rearrange. True. And well, that's we have options. We mm -hmm. have so many options in ProStitcher yeah. Premium. And I know that while we've been working together the last uh, several times, that I'll show you one way and you do yours a completely different way. And I think, ah, oh, 
I didn't even know you could do it like that. That's cool. Yep. Okay. Okay, now what you can do. So the multi-select tools I think you're going to find are also useful because not always do I want to select all. Sometimes I right. just want to work with a couple of the pieces, not all of them. Okay. And so that's where these tools, again, come in handy. We looked at select all. This one is select none, and I want to select none right now. Okay. I don't want to have anything selected when I start this process. I'm going to turn on the multi-select tool. Okay. Now this is another one of those toggle tools. While it's turned on and active, it's dark green, and I need to remember it because it, if I leave it on and try to do something else later on, it can work against me a little bit. Okay. But while that tool is active, I can choose any of these pieces and pick up just the ones I want. Okay. So that's how I'm going to pick my stitch order. I'm going to go to my workspace, pick double swirl, pick blustery breeze, then rolling along, then repeat grid So it's square. creating that group again uh -huh. down below exactly. in the order that you did it. Exactly. Okay. So it's the same result that we got, mm -hmm. but the only difference is I have the ability to work with just the pieces. I right. want not everything on this right. grid. So. so two different ways of yep. using, and now we know, you know how to use your multi-select or how to use those arrows exactly. to change the order. That's right. So and if you're going to be doing custom quilting, you need to be able to do those things. Right. So remember, you can rewind this. You can get both ways. That's right. There you go. All right. So baseline and stitch. And I really can't wait to see how that rolling along stitches out. Look at that cool texture yeah, that's it got going on. Yeah, it gives some nice texture. Very good. All right. That would be... So just for the fun of it, let's select them all. Okay. Well, they're all selected. Oh, I, I, yeah. Let's just do that. Okay. Now what I want you to do is go to repeat. Okay. And let's just, did we baseline them? We might want to baseline them. I don't think we them. did, but we should. Okay, that's good. Okay. Let's just do a repeat across and down to just see what happens if you... That's pretty cute. There's a quilt that says Now, wait right a minute, there. though. If I were going to do this... You'd want to flip Personally, them. I'd want to <laughs> swip, switch them around. So then, <laughs> let's I couldn't talk repeat about them. it. Yeah. So we can't repeat, we duplicate. So you let's have to duplicate. undo. Exactly. So let's get back to the one. We've already baselined that. So duplicate is an editing feature. And duplicate is going to land another one right on top of my crosshairs. Okay. So what, how do you want this rotated? What, it's your quilt. <laughs> <laughs> now it's my quilt. <laughs> okay, well, let's start by mirroring it. Okay. And let's... Oh, they're going to be... Oh, <gasps> you're going to rotate it. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Is that better? I like... Wait, wait, though. I don't you know. You got those two in the same point. The rolling along. Shouldn't have mirrored. How's oh, that? Oh, I like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got these two. And we could align them. If we set an area, we could align them to each other really okay. nicely. Now, if we wanted to create a duplicate of these... And then... And then select both So we select them, all... You can also click when you got a mouse. <laughs> you can also click and drag and but draw with a marquee us around without them. Without the mouse, <laughs> exactly. you'll do the select, select all, all, then edit, duplicate, duplicate, and then we just can, drag them down. I think let's. Oh, you know what? It do looks this. Right. Let's mirror them. Okay. What do you think? Modify, rotate. I hope you're all learning something mirror. because we're having a lot of fun. I know. <laughs> oh, what are we doing? Something here like work? I know. Yeah. <laughs> How do you like that? Yeah. I think that looks really And then that could cute. be just a fun quilt, just a whole quilt. There you quilt. go. I like it. All right. Good job. Wow. We have learned. <laughs> Is there any, anything else you want to? Oh, my goodness. There are so many things that we can talk about. I just don't even know what to think about. I think we need to save this. Okay. So where are you going to save it? Well, since I'm not quite satisfied with how everything here is laid out, for instance, my pieces aren't aligned very well, they're pretty Correct. scattered, I would save this as a workspace. If I save this as a workspace, then each of these individual pieces will remain individual and I'll be able to open them up and edit them okay. later. Okay, so I want you to save it like you've got to fix it. Right. So I don't we, have time need, to fix it right now. Yes, we do. Oh, we do? Oh, okay, then. We do. All right. Because our viewers want to know how you're going to fix this. I can't blame them a bit. <laughs> I don't either. So we need to back up okay. and maybe create that box that you're talking about or the yeah. area. I want you to fix it so that you're ready to save it. Let's go back to the point before 
we baseline these two pieces. Okay. Okay. So what we want to do now is we're going to set an area. I'm going to move this out of the way for a second. Turn off my multi-select for a minute. And I'm going to move the crosshairs enough to where we can set an area. Let's just set a two-corner area. Okay. So area tab. We're going to set a two-corner here. And I think the size of our design is about 30 inches wide. So I'm just going to input 30 inch width for my area. So you want to keep this? Approximately. Okay. And we'll put it in a 30 inch And height. if you were on a th smaller throat because your height is 15 inches, you may want ha need to resize this, which you just do a smaller sure. area. Sure. Yeah. That wouldn't be hard at all. So I want to be able to select each one of these pieces individually. So I'm going to just drop them completely for a second. And can I still do that? There we go. So there there's our first, That's your first merged group. So I'm going to take this little guy and I'm going to use modify align. Now, a minute ago we were talking about the reposition tools and all those tools relate to the design and its relationship to the needle or the crosshairs. In this instance, align is about how the design relates to the area. Okay. okay. So over here in the sidebar, which wall is exactly align which wall to. are we going to stick to? So I can hit left and vertical top. Let's drop that guy and pick up this one. And this one's going to go on the right and vertical top. So we might want to move them in a little bit to touch, but we don't have to. Then we can select all and edit, duplicate. Let's bring it down where you can see it. And then this one, all we have to do is align it. So were you going to flip that or anything? Uh -huh. Yeah, which way do you want it to go? Did we flip it? Did, last time, didn't I we just? I think we just flipped it. No, we can't. Now it has to be this way. Okay. Is I that better? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then all we have to do now is align the bottom and center. Okay. And it's ready to go. Select none. So select all. Now our stitch order might be a little funny here if you look around at all the jumps we got going on, but I think it'd still stitch in. I think I a think we're still order. right. Yeah. Um, if I wanted those all to touch, I would have to select each merged group and then just resize them a little bit larger? You could resize them. Mm -hmm. Okay. We could resize them or we could nudge them in to the center a little bit using uh, the nudge tool okay. by selecting each one individually. individually. Mm -hmm. That would be fun too. So we could pick each one and then modify, reposition. And the nudge tool here is just about the design and the workspace. It has nothing to do with the area or excuse me, it has nothing to do with the area or the crosshairs. It's just about the design. Okay. And you can change this nudge factor to suit yourself. Matter of fact, I change it pretty frequently. So you're going to nudge it a quarter inch? Yeah, I'm going to nudge it a quarter of an inch diagonally. Oh! Okay. Then we'll do that on I each one of I love those diagonal nudges. I do too. And then we'll select this one and do it. And then this one and do it. Better? I think so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's, That's pretty great. cute, you know? It really is. All right. Okay. There are so many features that I you know. have talked about today, just things that you just really don't maybe understand quite how to use. Mm -hmm. But thank you. Thank you so much You're for welcome. coming back. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. And for showing more. And you can... Um, see this anytime you want. Just subscribe to our Handy Quilter channel on YouTube yep. and it'll be there for you anytime in the middle of the night so you don't call us, right? Right. Well, you could, but you won't get Vicki at 3 o'clock in the morning. Or, or Susan. No, no, no. no. Yeah, so <laughs> we are so, I'm so happy that you were able to come back and do some more. Me. Thank you. And join us next month for another HQ Live.